Hi everybody. Today we are going to do a little Dynamo for Revit exercise, learn some of the generic concepts about Dynamo and some specific stuff about using it for Revit. Uh, we're going to uh, end up executing a file that looks a lot like this, which is going to be a Dynamo file that goes in and looks within Revit to get uh, information in. It's going to do a very simple kind of computation on it and it's going to write some information back into the Revit file specific things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling information out of a loaded family, notably uh, all of the windows within the family, uh, within the file that is, within the document. We're going to get a couple of different parameters. One of those sets of parameters are going to be just sort of regular old user visible parameters like mark. And the other is we're going to get actual uh, XYZ coordinate data from the windows. We're going to amalgamate these into one single piece of information. That is, we're going to say, mark value of the window and append to it the uh, position in space and then we're going to write this back into the family and we're going to do this with one of the very standard out of the box data sets that come with revit 2016 uh, the advanced sample project so i'm going to restart all of this so we can start from the beginning but that is where we're going to end up so without further ado if you go into your Revit zero project state, uh, we're going to go open and a sample file, and you're going to get the Revit advanced sample project. It doesn't really matter actually if you're going to do this in Imperial or metric, uh, it's all going to come out the same. So the first thing that I want to show you is that when you open it up, this file opens up in a perspective view. So why is it important that it's in a perspective view? Well, if you go to your add-ins where Dynamo is located, you're going to notice that Dynamo is grayed out. I want to just sort of point that out because anything that you can do through the API is due to the, in Dynamo, still has all the same restrictions that have any other API functionality. So you can't run Dynamo unless you are in certain editable views. And that would be something like a 3D view, but not a camera view. You need to be in a regular editable view in order to access just about any API functionality. And Dynamo is that API functionality. So you go to Dynamo, you're going to launch it up, <clears throat> and we're going to start from nothing. One thing to also remember is that Dynamo likes to operate, or really only operates, on the document that you open it with. That is, I have this document active, I'm going to start up Dynamo, and that's going to be the one that Dynamo is going to attach to. I could shut down all of my documents and I could start up a new one and then Dynamo will attach to that. But just so you know that when you're in a sort of multiple document state, um, Dynamo is going to be attached to whatever was active when you launched it. And we're going to go make a new document. Now, I've got a bunch of other libraries in here that you may not. Um, these are just things that I've gotten from the package manager. Um, this allows you to expand the functionality that's in Dynamo into new and greater states. But we're going to be dealing with all out-of-the-box functionality stuff that just comes uh, in, the, in the basic state when you're opening up Dynamo. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, just illustrate what it is that we're going to try and accomplish here. Like I was saying, we're going to be moving data from Windows uh, to uh, within the parameters of a window. And in particular, we're going to work on these guys right here. So these are basically all of the regular windows in the project. And if you look at these windows, you're going to see that like any other good Revit uh, model element, it's got a bunch of parameters. It's got a mark value. All of these things have already been populated with mark values. Somebody went through here and probably manually just labeled these. So they would show up nice and neat in their schedules. And it has a comments section like anything else. And um, that's about it, not too fancy. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to join the mark data with this Windows position in XYZ space, and we're going to write that into the comments field. And uh, that will be the entirety of our lesson. So let's start off with saying we want to get some information into Revit. So how do you go about doing that? Among this vast sea of nodes that I have, and you probably have fewer if you're new to Revit, uh, if you're new to Dynamo, what I want to do is I want to pull information out of Revit. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some Revit nodes. And these are Revit specific things. All the rest are not necessarily Revit specific. So if I open up the Revit category here, I want to pick stuff out. So I want to select things. So I'm going to go into selection and I'm going to look for select model element. 
there's two things. There's select model elements and there's select model element. Um, Revit is very picky about when you go into selection to be very specific about the kind of thing that you want to get. Um, am I selecting edges? Am I selecting faces? Am I selecting face? You sort of need to pre-determine what it is that you're going to do. So we're going to select a model element. And what this allows us to do is reach into the project and get some information out of it. So we're going to do just that. We're going to reach into Revit and we're going to get stuff. So you're going to activate the select button. And you can also notice that I am making it so that I can see what I want to pick at the same time. So I'm going to say select model element. And now I'm in a picker. And you can see I can still sort of tab into things and whatnot. Uh, but I want to get one window. So I'm going to get this window. Boom. I pick it. And I can see that the element ID shows up. And it also tells me what the thing is. And I have this little handy dandy bubble that comes down. If you're in versions of Revit, uh, if you're in versions of Dynamo before 9.1, uh, the preview bubble behavior will be slightly different. You might have to activate it. But right now in 9.1, you can just get it for free. You can also do things to make these sort of views of the data that's coming out of your elements persistent by getting a watch node. And uh, I'll show you a couple other ways that you can get things out of this library over here where all of our functionality is. If I write in watch, so this is basically when you sort of know what you're looking for. You might go in and use the search bar, or if you have an idea of what it is, but you don't want to go and browse for it. Um, you can also do other sort of synonyms for this sort of thing, and they come up. If I lace these two together, you'll see that now I have select model element, and I have a watch. They're both showing the same thing. There's a couple of neat tricks that also happen with this. So when I have my select model element, maybe I forgot which element this was, and like I'll zoom out and I'll be somewhere else. If I go and I click on this green highlighted thing, it actually zooms the view into center on the thing that I selected. It's just a nice little sort of convenience to sort of track things down. Now that I've actually gone through and grabbed some stuff out of my Revit file, I want to just sort of start asking it some questions. Maybe I can find out some information about my, my model element that I've picked here. If I go back down into my Revit nodes, there's a whole other set of categories, elements um, and uh, other, other tools in here. And one of the things inside of this Revit folder is elements. So you can get information on elements. You can do things to elements. Inside of elements, there's the redundantly named element. So this is basically things that you can do to almost every element. And what I want to do is I want to actually get parameter information from my window element. And that's something that you can do with just about any Revit element, is you can pull out uh, parameter information. So I've got this guy right here, which is get the values of one of the element's parameters. So I'm going to place this in. And what I can do here is I can I can actually use my watch node as a pass-through. I can either link up these things, things directly, or I can just say, I'll just use that as a pass-through. And I'll say, from that element, I want to get the value of a parameter, and I'm going to give it the name of that parameter. If I hover over this input uh, port, it'll say string. But the information that this is wanting is a string value. String is another way of saying text. Um, texts are uh, inputs. So if I look for string, I can see that string comes up as an input node. Also, if you're looking for things that are nearby other things within the library, you can click on these little um, highlightable uh, categories here for where these things are kept. Uh, this is also relatively new, I think, for 9.1. It might be in 9.0. So if I click on input, it'll bounce me back out to the larger catalog of information. So I can see where this thing lives if I want to browse to it later. It's in core input. So I can do a string node. String just allows me to type in whatever the parameter name that I want to get. So as we were seeing before, you know, our window uh, family has a number of different things. So I can I can ask it a bunch of different questions through this user uh, interface. I can say, tell me about your level. If I pass in the level, it'll tell me what level it's on. It is on uh, name three, uh, and it tells me what the elevation is. For instance, I can also, you know, query other elements of this thing, what its head height is, whatnot. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get the mark value of this thing. Oops, not March. Uh, remember also, Revit is uh, case sensitive. That is, it, if it's capitalized, it needs to be capitalized here. And I can see that the mark value for this particular window that I got is 28. And if I you know, double click 
this to center, I can verify that in fact that one is 28, just reading that information out. So what we're going to do is it'll do a really simple thing here right now. We're going to just sort of round trip this information into and out of the Revit file, and then we're going to get a little fancier with it. So here we did an element get parameter value by name. We also can set parameter values by name. So if I go back over to my library, I can go back to where I was before, which is in Revit uh, elements. And remember, this is something that you can do to most other things, just like get parameter value by names. You can set these parameters the same way. So I can go to, again, it's Revit elements element and near get parameter value by name. I also have set parameter. So very parallel in its structure here and what it does. So I can say, I have my element, which is the same thing that I was querying for information about what it is. And I have the value that came out of it, 28. So I can say parameter value. Well, I have a comments value over here that I can write to. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my string. And if you hold control and drag, um, this is also, I think you need 9.0 or 9.1 to do control drag. Uh, I can say comments. And remember, it's uppercase and it's plural. Otherwise, it will not like it. And you say parameter name that I'm going to write to is comments. And what am I going to write to it? I can just write to it whatever the value is that's coming out of this. Boom. And we go back and we inspect what's going on. And you can see the parameter now has comments as 28. I can also change this to be something you know very high that I know isn't going to be somewhere else. I change this to 200. You can see that that will update in over here in comments. So right now, Dynamo is monitoring this workflow. And it says it because it's running all the time. Talk a little bit about this later on. But if I make any changes over here, it'll monitor that change and it'll percolate it back through. OK, so we moved a parameter from one place to another. That's not so exciting. It has some promising possibilities, though. Um, these are all values that we can see sort of at the very high level within the Revit file. What about stuff that you can't actually see? One of the things that people often want to try and do is find sort of the absolute coordinate space of different things in their projects. And uh, essentially what they're doing is they want to find the location of this thing in space. Uh, that is something that is exposed within uh, the Dynamo uh, interface. So if you look for location, um, there's a whole lot of things in here. Um, so what I might want to do is I might want to thin down what I'm looking for because there's a lot of things in here. I have a lot of different libraries. Like I was saying, I had loaded other things. There's a filter up here, by the way where you can filter your results and you can just look in Revit stuff, for instance, or you can look in all of these different libraries. So if I said only Revit stuff, now I've got a much more sort of manageable set of locations I can look at. So this is latitude and longitude, not what I'm looking for. This one gets the location of the specific family instance that I want. It's kept in family instance. So if I click on this, I get family instance location. So I've got my family instance, as we said before, over here. I can wire those two guys together, and it gives me a point. You can actually see that showing up back here in the background. These are navigation tools so that you can toggle between navigating in this space and navigating in the background. So now, because I'm in a metric file, this thing is in millimeters, so this is way the hell out there. Um, when I navigate around, you'll see it swinging a bit. Um, so you can, you can see your three-dimensional uh, geometry. Three-dimensional geometry is not so important for this particular file that we're working on. But the thing is that now I actually have this piece of information. I could go and I could try and write this information straight into the value for set parameter by name. So then I would basically try and push the point coordinate information into comments. And I'll show you why it doesn't, I'll show you that it doesn't work right off. And then I'll tell you why. So comments, parameter name, and it's looking for a value. Could be any kind of value. Dynamo doesn't know what kind of value this parameter wants. I'm going to go and I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to get an error. Um, it may not be incredibly legible, but what is going on here is that I'm taking a point 
and I'm trying to write a point into something that essentially takes a string value. Comments are string values. And if I'm going to write something into that, I need to turn it into a string. So what do I do? I've got this nice piece of information that is being written out as a point, but what it's actually doing is it's expressing a piece of geometry. I can't write geometry into a parameter field. So I need to convert this into a string value so I can just get these numerical values. Um, there's a lot of string tools within Dynamo. In the core functionality, you have all sorts of things like inputs, um, uh, list manipulation tools, formulas, all the rest of that sort of thing, mathematical operations. There's also strings. So if you look at string, and there's also, not to be confused with strings, sorry about that. Um, string value has lots of different things in here. And along with the other things that it has in here where you can split and sort of splice strings together if you want to sort of take multiple strings and put them together in different ways. You also have string from object. So if I get the string from object, what it's going to do is it converts an object into a string representation. Uh, an object is a very generalized way of saying stuff. Uh, a str uh, an object could be a file that has a file name. A string could be, I mean, the object could be um, a whole piece of model element. Um, you know, this guy up here, this is actually a family element that is passing me in here, and I would have the same problem writing it into a value. I can take this thing and I can pass it into my string from object, and it looks very similar, of course, um, but it is a different thing. One of the things that you'll see in this comparison is that I don't have my little green highlight. This is a family object, and this is a string. This is just a text representation. I can do the same thing with my family instance location, where I can say string from object. And now this is a string representation. Uh, one thing that you'll see here is if I select this, you'll see that this guy highlights up here. And I'll do that again. Pick, and you'll see it highlight in blue. If I pick this, it's not highlighting in blue, because this is not a point. This is just taking this thing and turning it into a string. So I can take that and I can go into my value and my value is happy again. And what has it done? It's gone in and it's put that string value here for the family. So now I can go and I can schedule my windows and I can know exactly where it is in relationship to everything else in the project because I've just extracted its location and I've wrote, written it back into the family. Um, other things that you'll see with this, so uh, I'll expand this out so you can see this whole value. Uh, as we were showing before, Dynamo is monitoring what's going on. Uh, if you look at my value here, Z, uh, 8,515. I can take this guy right here, and if you watch that value, you know that Dynamo is sort of watching what's going on in this game, and it will update that value and modify it based on changes that I make over here. So you get this kind of relationship where Dynamo keeps watching, keeps updating the model, keeps everything in check, as long as you are working with it in automatic. I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can do here, which is you can change this into manual. And when you get into more complicated workflows, you might wanna slow things down a little bit and say, I'm gonna do a bunch of work and then I'm gonna execute it all at once. It's another way to work. It's a style that works better for some people than others. Um, and so the way that you'll see that that works is that in this instance, I'm in manual now. And if I take this guy and I drag it down, nothing happens, right? This thing hasn't updated. And if I run, now it updates. So it basically just allows me to execute these things on demand. Um, so these are very sort of specific Revity things. Over here, we've got specific things to pull information out of Revit. Uh, here, we've got stuff to push information back into Revit. Let's just do one more thing on this where we can do some very generic kinds of uh, computational workflows where we're going to, we're going to do something sort of chewy in the middle that's just sort of pure dynamo for um, adding a little bit more information into this process. So I've got my values that are coming out here, of you know, 200 for my mark value. I've got my string values over here. Why don't we see if we can uh, put these two things together just so that we can add a little bit more information into the process. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can add strings together. Um, concatenate is one thing. Um, which is, if you're back over here in the strings, you can concatenate in you know, any number of strings. You can say, you can plug them together, and then you get the same output where it, it 
it uh, combines them together. Uh, you can also add them together. Um, and I'll also show you one other way to sort of access this library. If you right click and you just do plus, you'll be searching this catalog over here, same way, but just it's a little faster. You can get it through the right click menu. If I do plus, then I can get an addition. Uh, and this just allows me to say, take, uh, I'll take my mark value and I'll add it to my string value. And what I will get in the end, remember, nothing is happening right now because I'm in manual. If I run it, I will get 200 point. I could do a whole bunch of other things where I could concatenate some spaces or I could concatenate mark space, 200 space point, but it's tedious and we don't have very much time. So I can take this concatenated string and I can pass it into my value. And now I've got something that's a, a little bit more, um, you know, sort of formatted. I know that at mark 200, I have a point. So all is well and good. I've got sort of a, a chewy middle in here of just, uh, and I'll do this, I'll create group. This is also a nice way to organize your, your graph after a while. You can say, um, this is my uh, chewy generic middle of computation. And uh, I can make it big so I can read it from far away. Boom. I'm going to make it hot pink because hot pink. Uh, and I can take these guys and I can gang these all together and say, this is create group. I can go in here similarly and say, get stuff from Revit. And I'll also make that big so I can see it from far away. Um, I can also do things like if I click in here, I can go clean up node layout, which straightens up my model. Um, some people like it. Some people don't. It's an automatic way to start uh, organizing your model if your model's getting messy. Um, you can also do that uh, by selection. So I can select these nodes. And uh, if I have these things in selection, I can go to clean up node layout. It's also control L and it'll just straighten those guys out in relationship to each other. It's nice. Some people like it, some people don't use it. So anyway, this is all well and good, right? I can do this sort of workflow, but big deal. I could write that with one file, right? Or that is not one file, but I can do that to one window. You know, I could go into one window and I could move my information from one place to the other. It would probably be pretty hard for me to find the point data, um, but you know, as it is right now, I'm just doing this on one piece of information. I've got all of these windows in here. So how do I go about doing this sort of operation to more than one thing? So if I wanted to do it to all of these windows, you know, windows are a category. Windows are a category of stuff. So if I look for categories, for instance, category, um, you can see there's a bunch of stuff in selection that's going to deal with categories. Uh, again, I could use the filter to sort of get that down. But I'm going to go back into my selection in Revit, and I'm going to look at what I've got. So how can I go in and get all of these windows? I could do stuff like, you know, I kind of understand select model element. Maybe I could do select model elements. I could isolate all of these things in a view, and I could select all of them. Um, but that's a little tedious, and I know I want to do this on all of my windows. So I can say, I want to get all elements of category. All elements of category. And it needs to know what is the category that I want to get all the elements of. And luckily, I have a uh, all built-in category picker. What this guy does is it goes into the Revit file, and it finds all of the categories that are in here. And it's a long, long list. Um, so one of the things to know about this long list is that it will uh, jump to things by typing in things. So I want to get Windows. So if I do WIND, it'll jump down to the bottom of the list. I have Windows. So now I say, of the category Windows, get me all the elements of that category. And I'm, I'm in manual still. I'm actually going to stay in manual because I'm going to start doing some things to a lot of elements. And Revit can bog down a little bit uh, when you're running in automatic. So I'll just keep it in manual for a little bit. Um, Again, sort of stylistic thing, you can do it in auto, um, but just to sort of show you different ways to do things. So here I've got this list that is all of these elements. 
And I can, again, I can see which ones these are by you know, clicking around within my frame. So I can say, you know, which one is this? Oh, it's that one. Okay. Um, so anyway, I've got a big list of windows. Here, I was doing this with a single model element. And now I've got a whole list of model elements. Now, if I take this and I just swap it out with my watch node, which conveniently is plugged into a bunch of other things, so I can just trade out one for the other. Now I can go in and I can run this and it'll think for a second. And I will get uh, a whole list of things in the watch node. I will get a whole list of points that have now been located. You'll see also in the background that I've got center points for every single one of these families that has shown up. You can also see the one that I sort of pulled out of place. And I've got the mark data for every single one of those guys. And I've concatenated all of those things with my addition node. And if we go back in and we can start looking at each one of these families, you can see that indeed it's moved the mark value into the comments value with the point coordinate information for each one of these guys, of which there is 13 of them. So that's pretty much the full workflow that I wanted to show. And again, it's um, it's a fairly generic setup. That is, there's getting stuff from Revit. There's doing a couple of little um, calculations to sort of maybe add a little bit of value to the things that you're doing. And then there is a portion of this which is writing stuff back into um, your Revit file. And a lot of the workflows that we see coming through uh, for Revit interoperability with Dynamo is this kind of thing of like looking in your Revit file, doing something to it, doing some transformation to it, and then moving it back into your file in a different way. The other thing to sort of point out about this is that um, this is a fairly generic workflow in general to say, get stuff from some external source. So you could say not from Revit, but from outside and write stuff to outside. Because Dynamo really is something that works with a number of other tools. If you go into the library, you'll see that there's a bunch of tools for Excel interoperability, for instance. So you could think of this as, I'm going to get information from Excel, and I'm going to write it into Revit. Or I'm going to get information from Revit, and I'm going to write it to Excel. Or I'm going to get information from a image file that's on disk, and then I'm going to write it to Excel or do other things. Um, this is a specific workflow to do things, bringing stuff out of Revit and writing back into Revit. But the thing about Dynamo is that it is a generalized computation tool which can interoperate with a lot of different things. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this coming up in the future. Uh, Dynamo Studio already is a standalone environment to interoperate with many different applications. Dynamo for Revit has been out for a while and uh, getting a lot of adoption. We're now seeing Dynamo interoperating with uh, React structural analysis, uh, and there's more tools on the way for that. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you, and um, thanks for watching.